Hello everybody, my name is Justin and in this video you will see two parts, Shipwreck Preview and the Coral Reef Tutorial. For the tutorial we'll be using 3ds Max, Matbox, Photoshop with Quixel Suit and at the end we'll try to import it into Unreal Engine 4 and create material for the mesh. Let's begin with the short cinematic. Was already sculpted inside Madbox and painted in Photoshop and Madbox as well, and the base geometry that was created in 3ds Max. Now we'll be creating a similar piece like this in order to create some base so we can further sculpt it inside Madbox. Let's go ahead and press T for the top down view and create a line. This line now goes around the outline of our top down view in a sketch. Uh, if you're wondering how to apply the sketch on top of the plane, you have to press M, put your JPEG, TGA or PNG file here, connect it to the views channel of the standard material and then apply it on top of the plane. Make sure you have this button selected. In order to sculpt this mesh, we need to create a subdivide modifier on top of it. Let's change the value to 4, F4 to see the result. Now, let's go ahead and collapse the stack and add edit poly on top of it. Now we are able to actually modify it further. Use push-pull, flatten, relax, soften, or while you're having push-pull on, you can press shift, that will also relax and then use shift in order to sculpt your mesh. If you press alt, you will sculpt downwards. Let's grab the border selection, click on it, and shift and drag it. So we have this base. Now, once you're happy with the result, Let's select it and press Alt-Q to separate it from the rest. Right-click on those arrows while being in the transfer mode and then export selection. Make sure you export it as an object file and use triangles. At this point it doesn't really matter whether we have quotes or triangles. Now as we import the model inside Matbox uh, it is being triangulated and it has bad, not uniform topology. In order to fix that, we retopologize the mesh. Here, I already did it, so the program remembers previous operation. However, in uh, Matbox there is a bag, which doesn't allow you to retopologize the same mesh in the same scene twice. That's important, because you might apply so much changes, so many changes to the model. In the end, we will end up uh, retapologizing the mesh twice or even three times. And every time I retapologize, I export the high resolution model into new scene in Madbox and then retapologize it there. Because for some reason, if you want to retapologize an object the second time, it still remembers the coordinates of the previous retapologizing operation. So it messes your model up. 
Dorita Apologize Mesh automatically creates subdivision levels for you. So this, for example, is the lowest subdivision level. Here we'll be using uh, Sculpt, Smooth, Grab and uh, um, Scrape tools, as, as well as Flatten, to, in order to sculpt the mesh. Now, to bring up the full screen, you need to press T, and in order to smooth out surfaces, all you have to do is press Shift while using your brush. If you're having a difficulty sculpting some areas of your model because others are in the way, the best way to deal with it is to press V, then select faces you want to hide, and press H. And then I believe it's U, which stands for show all, to bring those faces back into the scene. It's important to realize that in advanced settings of every brush in Madbox, we can set up the plane in which the brush will work. So if, for instance, in Flatten tool, if you want to flatten the surface to be horizontal, we will use direction Y. And if we were to flatten it to the camera pointing, camera point of view, we would use the camera. At some point, it's difficult to sculpt anymore because of the topology and how bad it is. So I export the high resolution mesh into a completely new scene and then retopologize it again. In order to add details to the mesh, I'm using stencils and uh, sculpting them out or imprinting them. And it's also very important that I create details on a separate layer. In this case, I can always tone them down or even remove them entirely without um, changing the basic structure of the mesh. When I'm happy with the result, I step down into level 0 by pressing page down and then I select that level and export it as an object. Then this exported mesh has quantified and uniform topology which can now be imported into 3ds Max and then used to unwrap it. Now let's go ahead and add unwrap UV W modifier on top of it. The best, probably the best way to unwrap those natural looking shapes is to use seams and separate several, several areas of the mesh, then use the pelt option in order to stretch them, and finally use relax tool to smooth those faces and make the texture not stretched. Let's make sure that the topology is clean and the UV map has no overlaps and no inverted polygons whatsoever. Once we did the geometry and we're happy with the result, as well as the light map, let's go ahead and export selection straight into the matte box. Make sure we're working with polygons, quads, not triangles. Then in the matte box, import the object and notice that it's being placed directly on top of the existing high resolution model. Alright, here is the fun part. While we have the low resolution model on top of the high resolution model, we can go ahead and choose the UVs and maps, extract texture maps, new operation. Here, go ahead and choose normal map as well as ambient occlusion map. In the target model, you choose your low resolution mesh, and in the source model, you choose high resolution. Make sure that you're working with a tangent space, not world space, for the normal map. Uh, I recommend anti aliasing. Multiple 2 is good, and I find that search distance best guess is the best option. Also, by changing the choose samples into the closest to the low res mesh. Make sure that when you import your low resolution model, all of its surfaces, all of its faces, having the same smoothing groups. Notice how the matte box automatically applies those created, newly extracted normal map and ambient occlusion map straight on the low poly model. Now, the normal map gives an illusion of the three dimensional high resolution model, and the ambient occlusion just gives an idea of how the shadows should look like. And I really like the extracting of army of occlusion in this program because it takes into consideration not just tangent space of the normal maps, but also it takes into account the ambient light, the world space. Let's go to the 3ds Max, open up the UV editor. Here, under tools, render UVW template, 
choose the proper resolution, it must match your texture resolution, or at least its ratio, and turn off the seam edges. Go ahead and render UV template. Then press this little icon, save, and save it on your desktop. To import this UV set, just drag it here, accept and go select color range, choose the black because we want to get rid of the black, fuzziness is set to zero, ok and simply press delete, ctrl D to deselect. If I zoom in you can see that the, indeed the normal map and the ambient occlusion map and every single map that I am working with corresponds to the UV set, having a nice normal map, we can launch the Quixel suit. We'll be using Endo. If you press this little button here, you can choose Map Converter, and as we are working with normal map, let's go ahead and leave it here, as normal, and choose Ambient Occlusion and the Cavity. To choose both, press Ctrl. And then press the active document. Now it will take the information from the normal map we are looking at and try to create something like this. This is cavity. Let's go ahead and uh, control C, uh, control A, control C and uh, um, paste it on top of our normal map. So this is cavity map and I'm in occlusion. Seems a little bit too detailed. So here under standard occlusion we can change its parameters, reduce the fine shadow, maybe increase a little bit of medium shadow, and I think that's okay. Now, press on top of this occlusion folder, and then press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E. This will merge everything that is below and create a separate layer, ambient occlusion layer. Let's select it and copy it. Put it on top of the already existing normal map and cavity. Now the ambient occlusion works with the multiply and the cavity works the best with the overlay blend mode. Now let me give you an example. This is a base texture for my material. Now I'm applying the curves to make it a little bit brighter as you can see and on top of it I'm adding some folder called definition. Let's see what, ha what, what happens when I press on and off. Uh, when I turn it on, we can notice that this overlay and the ambient occlusion begins to take place. Let's expand this folder and see what it contains. It contains the newly created ca cavity layer. So this is cavity. And as you can see, it has an overlay of 100% opacity. It contains the ambient occlusion which was, which was created by the Quixel suit, and it's quite plain, and it contains a high resolution ambient occlusion directly from the Mavbox. Now, so let me show you how I made those colors. Now, in here, we have several layers with masks. If I press Alt and click on the mask, we can preview the mask itself and edit it. Very useful thing. The mask looks weird, that's because it wasn't created here in Photoshop. It was created back in the Mavbox. Here in Mavbox, we have possibility of painting on top of the model. All you have to do is go to Layers and Paint. Now, if you create a new layer by pressing this button, you have to have your object selected first. So this is the object we're working with here. Add a new layer and make sure it's diffuse and this corresponding size might be might be bigger if you want and on this layer here under paint tools we can choose paintbrush and begin painting now i did that here defining colors so this is the mask of the colors the alpha channel and these are the colors themselves this is exactly how the colors were, were placed on top of the geometry not in a Photoshop, but inside Mavbox. And in order to get the most realistic effect while you are painting in ma inside Mavbox, you have to make sure that your geometry has uniform, properly placed, good topology, and it's all quads. It cannot be triangles. 
the final step happens here inside 3ds max it's how to prepare your mesh for import into unreal engine 4. this is one of my favorite steps however um it it requires a lot of patience here is the model we imported now it already has applied material to it you already know how to apply material right but this one is a little bit different it not not only it has diffused channel but also a bump if you select press here and drag and click out click here in the gray space you choose normal bump and then normal straight here like so and it took me two years to realize this but if you hold this you can see the second option if you choose the second option you will actually see the more realistic effect inside the viewport you will actually see the uh, normal map taking place okay so in order to prepare your mesh we need to set a few things first let's go ahead and make sure that the uv map is not over no overlapping so, in order to do that, let's go select faces and select inverted polygons. Nothing has been selected, which means that there are no overlaps. Sometimes polygons are inverted, but they're not overlapping. So I guess you can try both options and see whether you have overlapping or inverted polygons. You can't have both for the life of you. Now, I'm going to use a script to reduce the amount of vertices but don't worry this script is for free and uh, let me just quickly find it it's LOD creator by Vnishek Sumba you might have heard of him it's a wonderful script now all you have to do is make sure that the model is properly unwrapped and its pivot point in the right position this is actually important if the pivot point is in the right spot the next LODs of this model will also have a pivot point in a good spot. And also another thing, before you use the LOD creator, you should collapse your stack of the modifiers. So just click on the top one and press collapse to. Now we are ready. Let's go ahead and press generate. Now the fun part is that you basically cannot tell a difference when you look at them like that. In order to do so, to tell a difference, you need to press F4 to show the wireframe. And then you see that this is lower resolution, high resolution mesh, and this one is lower. Now, the Agnishik Subba script actually creates not only triangles, but bots. So, we need to subdivide the mesh by choose and choose the value pretty high in order to uh, avoid creating new triangles. Then, collapse. And unfortunately, there is no perfect way of uh, preserving the UV map coordinates. It might appear that it's the same, but most likely if your geometry is complex and your triangles are not uniform, you will end up with overlapping and inverted polygons. So at this point you have to go unwrap, open up the UV editor and go ahead press select face and select inverted polygons. I'll just make this window larger for you. As you can see, those are very non-uniform, non-equilateral triangles which are being inverted. Let's go ahead and expand selection by pressing this button here. And go ahead and tools, relax, start relax and stop relax. Deselect it and go ahead and select inverted polygons again. Now, as you might have noticed, the amount of them reduced. You can repeat the same procedure twice or three times and maybe change a different relax option. And uh, you should be able to see that now it's only few polygons that are being inverted. For the last ones, we can just simply grab vertices and manually adjust them. So. Go ahead and fix all those issues manually. While you're done fixing them, you can simply select the newly created, which was this one, the newly created mesh, collapse its stack, and go ahead and generate LOD again. We have to repeat the same procedure as we did this one for this mesh. 
meaning subdividing with high value, collapsing, unwrapping, and changing the coordinates. Okay, well, once you're done with this, let's go ahead and select the height resolution model, reposition it to the zero by pressing right clicking on these arrows, zoom, it, zoom on it, and export it. Repeat the same procedure for other meshes, calling this lower resolution LOD1 and the lowest resolution LOD2. Now let's go into Unreal Engine 4. Cool. Okay, so here we are in Unreal Engine 4 and uh, we already imported the model, but I'll do it again for you. So let's head to your models folder and uh, Importing the model is as simple as just opening the right folder in your drive and dragging it into your scene, into your content browser, sorry. Then, once you did it, you should right click on top of it and level of detail, import LOD, import LOD1. It will ask you which file and you choose LOD1 file. Then. Repeat the same procedure, LOD2. It will ask you which LOD and you choose LOD2. Now, if you double click on top of the mesh, you... let's look here first. It's set to auto LOD, means, which means that the, this preview displays the LODs as they will be displayed in your scene. Now, we're currently at the LOD0, which means the high resolution. You can see triangles, 40,000. Let's go a little bit further. And as you can see, now the LOD1 popped into this place. Now triangle count is 18,000 only. If we go further back, you can see at some point it jumps into LOD2, only 2 and a half and 800,000, uh, 2,800 um, vertices, triangles. Now how to set it up? Un under the LOD settings, let me find it, yeah, here, there is auto compute LOD distances. We won't want this option to be off. Now, let's go ahead to the LOD level one. And here is the screen size of this LOD. So if I move backwards, you might see here, there is automatic update of the screen size of this mesh. Now it's taking 0 0.5, the screen size. Okay, so if I go back, as you can see, if when it goes to 0.4, it will become LOD1. Now, if we go to LOD level 2, it will be displayed when the distance, when the screen size will be 0.15. Now, once we set up the LOD, let's go ahead and set up the right light map resolution. The light map resolution is right here. 64 is fine for a mesh like this. If you want the highest quality, you probably would use 128 or something like this. Let's close this and create a material for the mesh. So I already created the material, so I'll show you how this looks like in the editor. So diffuse is very simple. It's just simple diff diffuse, map, diffuse texture. It might be multiplied with some values for the general brightness. I created I created this little thing with pressing one and pressing on the screen. And this one pressing by pressing M and clicking on the screen. If I right click here and convert it to the parameter, I can change its name. And its value. The default value will be one. The min the the minus the minimum vary value will be 0.2. And the maximum, let's say, will be 6. And if we plug it into the base color, there is no difference now, but as we create the material instance, we will be able to tweak this value with a simple slider and with a very fast result inside the scene. Metallic is 0, because this is not a metal. Now, specular just gives a boost for our um, specular areas of a map. If it reflects light, it reflects it stronger. 
here if we have a roughness material, roughness map, and uh, this is how it looks like. Oh, no, no. Let me just show you um, start preview and note. It's multiplied with 0 0.9 value to make it a little bit darker, and then it uses a power to let me preview it to make it more contrast. Now, normal map, this was generated inside uh, Mudbox, as you remember. Now, here is the normal strength, which goes to the multiply. We multiply the red and green channel, and then we combine those with the blue channel by uh, the node called MakeFlow3. Basically, creates a texture out of three channels. Yes, and this is a detailed normal map, which has a parameter to it and the texture coordinate. This parameter um, changes the tiling of the texture. It's set to 7 at this point. And if we add both normal maps together, this is the result we get. If I go further, you can see that we still have this basic definition we created inside map box. But when we zoom in, you can see that it's really detailed. To get the general idea of how the material will look like, what we can do is head to the scene, click on one of the models we put in the scene, or just find it in the content browser, open the material app, and here press on this icon. Now we have the preview of the material directly on top of our mesh, inside the material editor, which is pretty cool. Once we're happy with the result, let's go ahead and press apply and save. Save your material and place your meshes in your scene. That's pretty much it, folks. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot. I, I certainly did. And see you in the next video. Bye.